One word I would say to describe the Newman Center is supportive. Loving. Encounter. Community. What I love so much about the Newman Center is everybody is super supportive and really wants to see you grow in the faith. I feel like I was exposed to the entire body of Christ and not just part of it here more than I did in any other church. It's really gotten me to deepen my relationship with Jesus in a very personal way and allow me more opportunities for fellowship. The community here is important to me because I've met some of the greatest people that I've ever met in my entire life. And the people here are just people I'm gonna be friends with for the rest of my life. And you cannot say that for a lot of other places. The Newman Centers here in the Diocese of Corpus Christi aim at serving college students and college age young people as we bring them into a community and help to grow their faith and make it something their own instead of just something their parents have given them. You can find our Newman Centers here in the Diocese of Corpus Christi located in Corpus Christi, Beeville, and Kingsville. And you can find information about other Newman Centers throughout the U.S. by scanning the code you'll see on the screen. My name is Bob Cummings. I am the Director of the Office of Vocations for the Diocese. And my name is Sister Mary Claire, and I'm the Director of the Office of Consecrated Life and Vocations for Women. So we work in two separate offices, but uh, we both work to accompany young men and women to try to discern what it is God's calling them to. Hey, Corpus Christi Vocations team, Javier Ebertowski here in Rome. Just want to take a minute to thank you for praying for vocations. Vocations don't grow on trees. They actually grow in homes and households. And I believe that they are watered by your prayers. God has a plan for each of our lives that are, and it's very good and we're just here to help promote and bring awareness to the different vocations. And that, at that point, I walk with them and we talk about how the Lord's moving in their lives and from there, see how the Lord continues to move in their life. My goal is to accompany young men um, in this world that's very difficult to hear God's voice and understanding more and more how much God loves them and how God is really calling them to, to serve and to be fathers. We are people who want to help you listen to God's voice. And if you're already in your vocation, or found your vocation, we ask that you help pray and serve and accompany those that are in your life to help them find their vocation because we know that if we're living our vocation, that's going to be the greatest joy that we, we can have is to do God's will and to, and to live that fully. Check with your parish. There may already be a ministry beginning or feel free to contact us in our office and we will help get you started. Good morning and welcome to what is a blessed day in the Diocese of Corpus Christi. It is with great joy and thanksgiving the Most Reverend Bishop William Michael Mulvey will ordain today Deacon Raymond Pendleton, Deacon Thomas Swartz, and Deacon David Snow, Salt, into the sacred order of the priesthood. Here are your hosts for today's broadcast of the 2023 Priestly Ordination. Jesse De Leon and Regina Garcia Posada. Good morning and welcome. Hi, how are you, Regina? I'm doing well, Jesse. How are you? Very, very excited. This is indeed a special day. We are here, part of the Mass for the Conferral of Holy Orders. And it is a special day not only for us, but for the three deacons who will soon be priests here yes. at the Corpus Christi Cathedral. It's it's we're up here in the upper level, if you will, mm -hmm. of the cathedral, mm -hmm. and the buzz is in the air, I think, yes. is the way I was feeling it and trying to here, describe, it, describe yes. it. The church is starting to fill up with so many family members and friends and parishioners who want to be a witness to this, because this truly is a witness of faith that we'll see this morning. It is morning. a culmination of many years of study, mm -hmm. many years of, of course, discernment and uh, and. Uh, formation for these three young men and we're going to hear their stories here in just a little bit we'll meet them uh, one by one as we lead toward the beginning of the mass as it begins we'll also be talking with the chancellor of the 
Diocese of Corpus Christi. Father Richard Libby is here with us as well to give a little bit of insight today yes. uh, yeah. on the, on the uh, whole uh, experience of ordination, if you will. Yes, it's going to be ex amazing to witness, as I said, and also too, we want to be able that you are understanding a little bit of who we are going to have welcome into our churches, into our diocese, mm -hmm. and uh, you'll get to see that here in a little bit. At Mass will begin at 10 a.m. At that point, uh, both Jesse and I will uh, step away a little bit and be part of the Mass itself and understand what's taking place mm -hmm. and and see the recognition of family members, um, Deacon Raymond and so forth, all have gathered their friends. Family members are fully participating in the Mass as well, so that you're aware of that. They are uh, actually in the readings and offertory of the gifts will be That's family true. members from all three. So it's a very, very special occasion for part. them themselves to take part in it. They'll be part of the litur liturgy, which will be very special. Yes. And of course, a moment for them to remember, as of course, uh, Bishop Michael Moby will be uh, uh, ordaining them yes. later in the Mass, and it is something that we'll all be looking forward to, a very special moment for everyone here. And we want to be sure, if you would like to follow, as most of us do on our phone or so forth, like mm -hmm. to follow the order of worship, please uh, download on that QR code right there. You can actually get a run of show, if you will, as we like to mm -hmm. call it, but yeah. the order of Mass and the songs and the liturgy, the gospel, the prayers even of what will be said throughout the Mass. We also ask you to share uh, this uh, live stream if you're on Facebook or uh, the uh, platforms uh, that we have for the diocese, digital platforms, to share those this morning with as many people as possible. That way we get the word out and uh, increase the audience for this very uh, great and blessed event that is going to be taking place here just a few moments yes, from now. Yes, yes, it is definitely one of those you, events you do not want to miss because you will now connect with two of the priests who will be in our diocese, mm -hmm. our Salt uh, Deacon, um, Deacon David will move on to another location, but mm -hmm. we do have two who will be within our diocese. So you definitely want to get to know them right. as well and get to know their family members. So be sure to share this and with others just to see what's coming up next. Let's meet with the let's meet our first of the three deacons uh, here. Let's go ahead and uh, find out a little bit more about Deacon Thomas Swartz uh, as we uh, watch now. Swirk, 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 Swartz. It's it's a Polish name, so if you think about it, it, it if you want to try a phonetic kind of spelling, it's you can look at it as S W E R T Z. So Swartz. It's being that, that final configuration into the, you know, the, the priestly likeness of Christ. And, and yeah, I, I'm, I'm very nervous because, you know, I, I, wanna, I, want to, I want to be a good priest. I want to do, do mass and the sacraments and, and lead well, but, uh, Yes, yeah, so but without, but still, I, uh, but in all that, I still, while still, while becoming Christ, I want to be myself as well. I think the thing that I'm looking forward to the most as a, as a priest is probably um, hearing confessions. It's, it's such a beautiful sacrament to receive the grace of God's forgiveness and uh, through, through absolution and having, having, you know, myself been in, in, the recipient of, the, of that sacrament in, in the confessional and receive the recipient of God's love and mercy. I guess the the one thing I, I want people in the diocese to know is is my gratitude to everybody because as, as we as we've discussed and uh, I'm not a native of the diocese. I, I you know, grew up in College Station, was born in San Antonio, so I'm not originally from here. But everybody that I've met and encountered over the last eight years of my of my seminary formation journey, uh, everybody has been so so welcoming, so enthusiastic about having having me study for them, even though I'm not from here. I want to, you know, I'll, I'll give a shout out to to my family, to my parents, and for for being 
my first catechist for teaching me my first prayers and for always being a, a, a strong example of living one's faith and keeping faith and, and relationship with Christ as a, as a primary goal and aspect of living. And then my, my sister is always, she's Suzanne, uh, she has always been a, a very big, you know, role model for me and friend, especially, especially, sorry, now I'm gearing up. <laughs> um, better get this stuff out now than, than um, at my first pastor or nature. Um, <laughs> but uh, Suzanne, she has, she's been my friend for, since I was born. And um, I'm grateful for her and for my grandparents. I have my, my um, maternal grandmother is the only one I have left here on earth living. And I know she is, she and her siblings have prayed for me um, probably longer and more than I actually know. But I am so grateful to them and for them. And also for my, my other grandparents that have passed on to um, eternal life. I know that they are, they are also praying and very happy for me. And I wouldn't be here without them. And. I'm I'm very excited that they that they will all be at mass at ordination on Saturday and at my first mass on Sunday, whether physically in person or in the community joining us through the community of saints. It's so beautiful to hear from Deacon Thomas. And Heartfelt just, words. Yes, and uh, we actually will hear from his sister in a little bit. Who's we will. Here and we will. Uh, his whole family and during part of the rehearsal that they had, um, Father Pete did ask them, how many pews are you gonna need for your family? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it was fun to hear that many will be joining <laughs> us uh, today. And also joining us today is Father Libby. Thank you so much for joining yes, us. The chancellor and, for the yes, chancellor yes. for the Diocese of Corpus Christi. We welcome you, Father. Thank we know you have a busy morning. You'll be part of the procession and the, uh, the mass coming up in just a few minutes, but you did take time to join us this morning. We want to ask you a little about what you remember from your own ordination. As you just celebrated 24 years, Yes, yes. yes. 24 years uh, as a priest. Um, the direct answer to your question just is not that much <laughs> because a lot of things were happening that day. Right, I right. certainly remember bits and pieces, uh -huh. but there are certain aspects of every ordination mass that always bring back memories that mm -hmm. I may not remember them now and I'm going to remember them during the mass. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the, the ordination mass and this, the rite of ordination really emphasizes the fraternal aspect of the priesthood. I find very moving and I, I know other people have told me they find it very moving. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, these deacons are going to come in, they're going to be called forward after the gospel and um, called up to the altar. The bishop will then give his homily and then afterwards he will get them to make their promises. Mm -hmm. After which um, he will lay his hands on them and then all of the priests will go around and lay their hands on the candidates as well. Mm -hmm. And then after the bishop says the prayer of consecration that consecrates them as priests, um, other priests will help the men get into their priestly vestments for the first time. Mm -hmm. And then the bishop goes and gives each one a sign of peace, a fraternal embrace. Right. And then all the priests in order go around and it, it, it's like welcoming them into the priestly brotherhood. Yeah. All of that really moves me every time that happens. And then these two men walk into the church as deacons. Mm -hmm. And then after that, they step up to the altar and they join us as con-celebrants of the mass. They will be the, con the principal con-celebrants of the mass along with the bishop. So it's a very moving, yes. very wonderful ceremony. Yes, and of course, uh, uh, you're celebrating the, the anniversary of your priesthood as well. Mm -hmm. Doesn't seem that long ago, does it? <laughs> <laughs> Seems like yesterday. <laughs> there is a moment that I hear many talk about, and that is when the deacons lay on mm -hmm. the, what does that mean when they lay on the floor? They will um, lay down face face down on the ground, on the, on the floor, yes. there in front of the uh, altar. Mm -hmm. That symbolizes how they are laying down their lives and turning everything over to the church. Okay. Yeah. So visually that represents that. Right, yes. okay. right. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's as if it's the ultimate submission. Yes. Okay. okay. Do you remember, the, did you get to bless your family as soon as you were ordained priest? Yes, Okay. yes. Um, when the mass, right before yeah. the end of the mass, the bishop normally invites the newly ordained priests to give them 
their first blessing, to give mm -hmm. him their first blessings, right. which yes. is very wonderful. Yes. And then afterwards, of course, I went downstairs into the mm -hmm. basement of the cathedral to St. Joseph's Hall, and I had family and friends lined up, all wanting the first blessings. You know, oh, my yeah. parents, my brothers, mm -hmm. my sister, mm -hmm. cousins from both coasts. <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> it was really wonderful. Wow, so you had a traveling entourage, I did, did I guess, you? Yes. <laughs> That's wonderful. As we do as well, we do have a a few folks who are from out of town, out of mm -hmm. state, so uh, literally driving in mm -hmm. and getting here as, as soon as they could. They did uh, have Holy Hour yesterday mm -hmm. um, as well. Anything, any advice you would give uh, to our newly ordained priest? Pray. Pray. <laughs> Pray. Keep up your prayer life and, um, and, and participate in the fraternity of, uh, of, of the brothers. Uh, it, we, are, we are a good fraternal group in this, in this uh, presbyterate, this group of priests. So. And so get to know your brother priests and be fraternal with them. Father Richard Libby, we thank you for your time today. Yes, thank you. And we you, are will, 15 you will leave us now to, uh, okay. to go and join uh, and get vested and yes. go okay. and, yes. and be a part of the procession. So we thank you for that. Family playing a large role in today's festivities. And we were going to now uh, get acquainted with the sister of Thomas Swartz, uh, Liz Morales. We'll be talking to her. Let's uh, listen and watch. We are here on this glorious day in the Diocese of Corpus Christi on the Memorial of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. We have three deacons who are going to be ordained as priests within the hour. I have the sister of one of the deacons here with me, Suzanne Swartz, who is the sister of Deacon Thomas Swartz. Suzanne, tell me about this moment. What does it mean to you? It means, I mean, it obviously means a lot. Um, you know, we've been supporting Thomas through this for eight plus years now. He first came home during his freshman year of college saying that he was discerning to be a priest. And we we're like, okay, great, like go back to school. And, um, you know, he continued his, his prayer and his studies and um, then, you know, now the rest is history and it's so exciting and I'm just, I'm so happy for him. Yes, I can only imagine how excited you are and how, how fulfilling it must be to see your brother uh, at this point and fulfilling his vocation and finding his true happiness and calling in his life. Yes. He, so last year with it, during his diaconate ordination, um, after he was vested and everything and they were kind of presented to the congregation, he just had the biggest smile on his face. And so I just know that this calling brings him such joy and such peace. And so I'm just so happy for him and excited that, that he's heard the call and been able to answer it um, and, and that this is his, gonna be his life. And I know that he's excited as well. Suzanne, do you have anything that you're most looking forward to having a priest as a brother? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I, you know, it's kind of interesting having a priest in the family. Um, but I think one of the things that I'm looking forward to is just being able to help him, you know, stay grounded and know that he's got family who loves him and he's still a person like the rest of us and we still love him like we always have. Suzanne, yes, I, I can't agree more. It's going to be such a beautiful blessing for your family. Yes. And we have been praying for him, and we will be praying for him as we attend his ordination mass. And we're so excited and grateful for his yes to God and for his, uh, priesthood, for the, for his priesthood to our faith, to the Catholic Church. Yes, thank you all so much. Yes. Jesse and Regina, back to you. Right, thank you thank so much. Thank you, Liz. Oh, mm -hmm. and and you know it is family it takes it takes a village we've always heard that, <laughs> right, that phrase right. it takes a village and it does take a village of family and friends and fellow parishioners who are coming in as well to um, to see an ordination of three deacons becoming priests and so it's it's beautiful I mean I don't know the other words to say only that uh, to witness it and be a part of it is gonna change you even a sense of community mm -hmm. there like uh, Regina was saying uh, not only family and friends, but all of us coming from mm -hmm. parishes across the diocese, as well as uh, people that have traveled many, many yes. miles to be here. I'm sure the family uh, of, uh, of all of our uh, three deacons that will be ordained today have made, uh, have logged some miles yes. in the last couple of days, especially uh, the uh, family and friends of Deacon David Snow, who is a salt uh, and uh, 
he, uh, <laughs> is, uh, he kind of the baby picture took me by yes, surprise there. Yes, uh, uh, he uh, has uh, his uh, fellow Salt uh, brothers making trips today to uh, come and be a part of his <laughs> his ordination. And yes. of course, we see some images there on the screen of uh, a very young David with his uh, with his dad there and his family as he. Uh, looks back on his life and today the moment that it all has led to as he uh, takes his uh, holy orders today to become a priest. Uh, David is a, 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 a very successful musician. Yes, he is. He, <laughs> he is. plays so, the violin. Yeah, so David's mm -hmm. family actually uh, traveled throughout a couple of states to get here today. They and did. they did travel in. Uh, they stayed overnight in the middle of this week. I got a chance to talk to him earlier mm -hmm. this week. And he said they were coming in, staying overnight in San Antonio. His brother was flying in, and then they were coming into, into Corpus Christi just about two days ago. And then uh, he did mention he is the oldest of four, mm -hmm. and uh, music has been part of his life. The church has been part of his life. Actually, Salt mm -hmm. has been part of his life. His mother uh, was a lay person who would volunteer ever so much. So being around Salt and knowing the Salt community was something mm -hmm. that he was just always ingrained with. And then he found his love for music. And he had hints of possibly the priesthood. He mentioned as far to back me the as vocation. Sixth grade is yes, what he, said. he did. He and, did. Uh, and uh, he felt that call and uh, and continued with that and uh, uh, felt uh, even more called to it after reading a book about St. Thomas Aquinas. Yes. And once he did that, he was on the track uh, that uh, has led him to the moment today where he will become a priest. And we're very thankful to David and his family for sharing these photos as we uh, uh, take a brief look back at his life. And uh, there he is with uh, the bishop uh, there in his diocese, home diocese, uh, turning into a young man right there yes. before our very eyes. Yes, <laughs> and he did mention he was altar server as well, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, he did let me know that he uh, also enjoyed, not the music is what led him, mm -hmm. and is his uh, constant, uh, if you will, spiritual connection to mm -hmm. the church as, well, as he talks about. So let's just see who David Snow is. Hi, my name is Deacon David Snow. I'm with the Society of Our Lady of the Most Holy Trinity, or SALT. I'm originally from Kansas City, Missouri, and here in Corpus Christi, thanks be to God, to be ordained by Bishop Mulvey. My community, the Society of Our Lady, is a missionary community with priests, religious, and laity working together in our missions. So I'm super excited to be here, excited to be a priest. Thank you for watching. God bless you. Wonderful, and as we know, we're about eight minutes away from the start of Mass at 10, mm -hmm. and so everyone is gathering, and by everyone, I also mean uh, not only the deacons themselves, but fellow priests within mm -hmm. our diocese are here to also, as Father Libby indicated, to welcome them into the fraternity of brotherhood. And I was struck by what Father Libby said yes. about that. It's a, it's a brotherhood, it's a fraternity. It is a true sense of connection, and uh, they lead us uh, in the diocese, and we rely on them for guidance, for spiritual guidance. And we uh, also welcome the three that will be a part of it. Also, not only uh, Deacon David Snow, but Thomas Swartz, and of course, uh, uh, Raymond Pendleton, Deacon yes. Raymond Pendleton, who we'll meet here in just a little bit as well. Uh, very excited to be here. Lots of great energy yes. they all have. And we're looking forward to the very special moment that we will all share in the upcoming moments as Mass begins right at the top of the hour. Yes, and we want to know a little bit about Deacon Raymond as well. So we would hope to you can watch a little bit of this and we get to know him. I, just, I feel so much excitement to be ordained a priest, a uh, priest of Jesus Christ, and to finally uh, finally enter into priestly ministry and, and to serve uh, the people of God in this diocese. It's, I'm overwhelmed. Uh, it's exciting. Uh, it's been a long time coming, um, and I'm just so grateful uh, for everyone. During these last few days, uh, so many memories in my mind popping up of all the good people I've met, uh, both in seminary, my friends, but also uh, getting to know the diocese. We have such a beautiful diocese, and I just look forward to that, forward to serving everyone. I, I didn't grow up wanting to become a priest. It, it wasn't my lifelong dream, uh, although I think maybe uh, a lifelong call on uh, God's part. Uh, but uh, it really wasn't until my my first year of, of college uh, at AM in Kingsville, um, where my, my faith came alive again, um, I saw you know, many students my age going to Mass, uh, loving going to Mass, uh, wanting to learn more about what we believe, uh, and just being devoted to our Lord Jesus. Uh, and so that was something that inspired me to 
to appreciate and to love what my parents gave me uh, and their teaching. And uh, it was so from that that I started going to daily mass and starting to my second year of college, um, I fell in love with the Mass. I fell in love with uh, the celebration of the Mass and uh, paid attention to the priests, um, how they celebrated the Mass, but also outside the Mass, how they brought their celebration uh, and how everything they did was conformed to uh, to the celebration of the Mass. So I thought it was a very beautiful, beautiful way of life, um, although I didn't want to quite admit that I wanted to enter uh, into seminary to become a priest, but that's really what sparked it. It was really my, my friendships in Kingsville uh, and the Mass that uh, really led me to, to apply to seminary and to discern the priesthood. Uh, I, I really do believe God is calling me to that. Uh, God is calling me to the life of priestly ministry, and I'm so excited for that. So first, I, I would say uh, celebrating my first Mass would definitely be um, the thing I look forward to most, and of course, celebrating Mass after that. After that, I would say uh, hearing confessions, uh, bringing people closer to God, granting absolution, and helping them, you know, uh, to find their path to sanctity, and, um, you know, bringing Jesus to them. That's uh, really the best thing I could ever give to someone. Uh, so I look forward to those two, especially Mass and the Sacrament of Reconciliation. I first want to say that I am most grateful to my parents. Uh, I love you and I'm grateful for for your love for each other. I mean, I, this the home is where I first learned, uh, well, I guess the promises that I've made as a deacon, but also the promises I'll renew and make as a priest an ordination, um, how to be obedient, how to pray, um, to live simply and humbly and according to the teaching of the church. Um, so I'm most grateful to them. They were my first teachers uh, and the first to instruct me in the way of Christ. So for that, I'm super grateful um, and I love you. Also to my brothers and sisters who've been uh, with me throughout this time. We've had a lot of fun together. We together. Um, but we can share the most curious parts of our lives with each other and I'm grateful to God um, for my family. And finally, to my friends, uh, the journey is not as fun <laughs> without friends, especially my friends in seminary, the other men uh, who are on this journey with me. Um, they've made a long journey uh, very light and uh, they've also carried the burden with me and uh, there's no substitute for, for friendship. So. Uh, to you, I'm very grateful, as well as to all of you friends who are not in seminary, but in the diocese and outside the diocese, um, who have prayed for me and supported me and encouraged me. Um, there's no there's no substitute for that either. Um, so from the bottom of my heart, thank you all very much. Uh, I'm eternally grateful. As the mass begins and we prepare to back away and uh, let you wash it out of respect for the liturgy and uh, respect for the seminarians or actually I should say the deacons that will soon be priests and their families we will uh, not be commenting during the mass but we do want to remind everyone to do share this with as many people as possible yes as well and we want to be sure if you want to follow the mass and understand a bit more of the of the scripture and understanding the homily a little bit more from Bishop, uh, you can download the order of worship on our QR code that we will post up here momentarily, we'll give you time to get your phone and mm -hmm. get ready. Mm -hmm. And all you have to do is just get your phone up to the camera mode and up to the QR code and just click on it and you'll see the the order of mass. And it's, a, it's going to be extremely beautiful and moving for you. The Holy Spirit will come to you at moments you're not yes, sure you're would. Not <laughs> Of course. Yes. It's going to be beautiful, and we yes. thank everyone for being a part of this special live stream broadcast. We also invite you to check out our website, uh, dioceccc.org, to find out more about vocations and our other ministries here at the Diocese of Corpus Christi, as well as to continue to, continue to watch uh, the live stream as the Mass begins shortly. Yes, and we do have Knights of Columbus, as you saw uh, mm -hmm. throughout, and we do have. Uh, Again, uh, all deacons, altar servers, many altar servers mm -hmm. are here from different yeah. parishes as well who are here to support. Also, we have inside um, deacons, then we'll have our 
fellow priests from the diocese, mm -hmm. and then we'll enter with a bishop as well, and uh, deacons newly ad will be newly adorned. And uh, I would uh, assume in an hour, it is about a two-hour mass, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so we will um, stand by here, and we will circle back with you at the end of mass.
Good morning to everyone. Before we enter into the sacred liturgy, I just want to welcome in a special way the families uh, of Deacon uh, David Snow, his mother and dad and other members of the family are here, to the Deacon Thomas Schwartz and his family, and also to the family of uh, Deacon Raymond Pendleton. To each of you and extended family and friends, parishioners, welcome to all of you to this beautiful and memorable moment in the life of the church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. My sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. <clears throat> Sent to heal the contrite of heart, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Lord our God, who in governing your people make use of the ministry of priests, grant that persevering obedience to your will to these deacons of your church whom you have graciously chosen today for the office of the priesthood, so by their ministry and life may they gain glory for you in Christ who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. In the days of King Josiah, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I dedicated you. A prophet to the nations, I appointed you. Ah, Lord God, I said, I know not how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord answered me, Say not, I am too young. To whomever I send you, you shall go. Whatever I command you, you shall speak. Have no fear before them, because I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord extended his hand and touched my mouth, saying, See, I place my words in your mouth. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Every high priest is taken from among men and made their representative before God to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal patiently with the ignorant and erring, for he himself is beset by weakness, and so, for this reason, must make sin offerings for himself as well as for the people. No one takes this honor upon himself, but only when called by God, just as Aaron was. In the same way, it was not Christ who glorified himself in becoming high priest, 
but rather the one who said to him, You are my son, this day I have begotten you. Just as he says in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days when he was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered, and when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obeyed him, declared by God, high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus revealed himself to his disciples And when they had finished breakfast, he said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He then said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that he had said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. 
the Gospel of the Lord. Let those to be ordained priests come forward. Raymond Wayne Pendleton. Thomas Edward Swartz. David Andrew Snow. Most Reverend Father, Holy Mother Church ask you to ordain these, our brothers, to the responsibilities of the priesthood. Do you know them to be worthy? After inquiry among the Christian people and upon the recommendation of those concerned with their formation, I testify that they have been found worthy. Relying on the help of our Lord God, and of our Lord, Savior Jesus Christ, we choose these, our brothers, for the order of the priesthood. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Well, I guess you got the consent of the people anyway. (laughs) We're not a democracy, but we appreciate it anyway. (laughs) I hope I don't disappoint you today because I'm not gonna give you an expose or a class on the priesthood. Rather, I want to reflect with you a bit on what it means today to be a priest. So my brothers, David, Raymond, and Thomas, This is a day to remember, a day for all of us to remember. Our Holy Father Francis reminds us that to be a Christian 
is to remember. Your sacraments, the sacraments that you as a priest will confer on others are sacraments of remembrance because they remember what Jesus has done for us. The Eucharist is itself a memorial. Going into the confessional and hearing the repentance of so many people is a remembrance of the many that Jesus himself touched and forgave. Remembering this day is not a purpose, has the purpose of sentimentality. We cannot live a faith of sentimentality. That's the way it always was. But to remember and acknowledge the sacredness of God's presence today. You, as you've heard in the readings, have been chosen among the community of believers to be priests of Jesus Christ and therefore to be his representative, their representative before God. On this day, you are ordained a priest to share the life of Jesus Christ. As we say, to be another Christ. You are to conform through your life, your ministry, and especially through the cross, to conform your mind and your heart to the heart of Jesus Christ the beautiful solemnity that we celebrated yesterday. Today you are not glorifying yourself, nor are you being glorified, despite the much joy and applause that we all give today to the glory of God. But rather, you are called by the Father to be his son. You are my son, this day I have begotten you. This day for me reminds me of Moses in the desert before the burning bush, who asked, who are you? Yahweh, God, responded, I am who am, and I am sending you. In being sent, you are asked to remove, first of all, the sandals of your feet, because you are reminded that your ministry of word and sacrament is a work of the Spirit. It is a sacred work. The Holy Spirit will always and is always present as you administer the sacraments of the church and as you proclaim his word. There are times when we are preparing for a homily to leave the papers and the books beside and place yourself in front of God who says, I am who am. In a moment, you will prostrate yourself right here in the midst of the community as a recognition of the Spirit's gift of fear of the Lord. In other words, that you are powerless and God is omnipotent. The prophet Jeremiah also reminds you that your preparation and formation to be here today did not begin or did it conclude with your formal preparation of eight years? Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I dedicated you. A prophet to the nations, I appoint you. This also makes this day sacred because before you were born, God called you. Before you were born, he knew you. He consecrated you and is giving you a mission. Today, the sacrament of priestly ordination through the laying on of hands and the calling of the Holy Spirit, the Father confirms the call that he has given you even in your mother's womb. The crises that we experience today in our world and in our church is a crisis of identity. Who am I? It is therefore a crisis of forgetting. When we forget who we are, when we forget that God is everything and we are nothing. Who am I? We cannot know or understand who we are unless we know who he is. 
we will all forget who we are if we forget who God is. St. Catherine of Siena was the great doctor of this doctrine of self-knowledge. She said, you cannot know or understand who you are unless you know who he is. And when we block him out of our minds, we block him with our time, block him with our activities, we will forget who God is. And therefore, we will forget who we are. The wisdom of St. Catherine I ask you to keep in mind. Jesus spoke to St. Catherine one day when she was in prayer. Quote, Do you know who you are, daughter? Who you are and who I am? If you know these two things, you have the beatitude in your grasp. You are, you are she who is not, and I am who is. You are not, he is. That does not reduce our humanity, but it lifts it up that we are children of God, and we're children of God because God is everything. We, my brothers, are the ones who are not. And this is the source of humility and the source of self-knowledge. As you proclaim the word of God and as you administer the sacraments, especially the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist and the sacrament of reconciliation, I encourage you to remember this principle of humility. As you enter the confessional, I am not. You are everything. As you celebrate the Eucharist, you are everything. I'm nothing. In that spirit of humility, the power of God will come forth. The people that you serve will recognize that it is not you who are celebrating these mysteries, but God himself. St. John states clearly the reality of this self-knowledge when he reminds us, see what love the Father has bestowed on us that we may be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it does not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. The reality of ordination and being a priest is the conferral of God's power, divine power, to administer his word and his sacraments through the Holy Spirit. We are empowered with the Holy Spirit to do all things in the name of the person of Jesus Christ. The spirit of your ministry as a priest we can find easily lined out in the letters of St. Paul, who had one purpose, to proclaim Jesus Christ to the ends of the earth. I offer you these two verses as a reminder, and there are many others, of who Christ was for Paul and what his ministry was about. In the second letter to the Corinthians, Paul simply said, we hold a treasure in earthen vessels so that the surpassing power of God may not be from us. The power of the Eucharist, the power of the sacraments does not come from you or me. It comes from God himself. And again to the Corinthians, he said, when I came to you, brothers and sisters, proclaiming the mystery of God, I did not come with sublimity of words or of wisdom. How many people today are looking for fancy speech? The truth is not in fancy speech. It is in wisdom that comes from God alone. Paul continues, for I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. It was in the power of the cross that Paul found his, found his power in Jesus Christ. Not in the glories, but in the humility of the cross. I came to you, he continues, in weakness 
and fear and with much trembling. And my message and proclamation were not with persuasive words of wisdom, but with the demonstration of the spirit and power, so that your faith may not rest on human wisdom, but on the power of God. Many today are deceiving themselves by looking for human answers, human knowledge, and are not looking for the deeper meaning of faith, which is the wisdom of God that was nailed to the cross and rose from the dead. So my brothers, you have a mission to fulfill, and it echoes, it is the mission of Jesus Christ himself, who one day returned to Nazareth, his hometown. He went into the synagogue and he asked for the scroll, what we would call the Bible. He stood up to read it. He was handed the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. And as he unrolled the scroll, this passage came to his sight. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free and to proclaim a year of favor acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down, and all the eyes of the synagogue looked intently at him. And he said to them, today, this passage is fulfilled in your hearing. As you enter into the priestly life and ministry, you will encounter the poor, not just the monetarily poor, but the poor also in spirit. You will know those who are held in captive, not just in prisons, but captive by life and arrogance and pride. You will know those who cannot see, not just physically, but cannot see the deeper realities of creation and of God. And you will know those who are not free and those who want to find new meaning in their life. They want to begin anew. This is the human humanity that we share and you will know these people, the same ones that Jesus was sent to bring glad tidings. To fulfill your mission, my brothers, I'll conclude with this. You must be faithful. And that fidelity does not depend on your efforts. That fidelity depends on two things, which are not written here, but I wanted to put them, they were too long, but I'll make them short. If you go to the sermon of St. Paul VI in Nazareth, in 1964, there's a beautiful paragraph where he insists on silence. He said, we live in a world that is clamoring with voices and noise, opinions left and right, and we, you, I, need to discover silence. Because it is only in silence that you will hear the movements of the Spirit. It's only in silence that you will know what is true. It's only in silence that you will be able to have the power to forgive and the power to bring Jesus Christ in the Eucharist. And so I urge you to find silence for your life. And the second, as I've told at least the two of you over and over, the priesthood today is weakened by the lack of communion when any one of us tries to work on our own for our own purpose, we undermine the whole meaning of the priesthood. You share in the priesthood of the bishop, not because of my glory, but because God wants us to be one. He wants us to be organized into a unity, to share the life of Jesus Christ together. And so I ask you and urge you <clears throat> to be in communion with your bishop, with your superior. Only in that way will the church advance. 
It will stop crumbling apart as it has been for several years. And to the laity, I say the same thing. When we can discover the purpose and the meaning of Jesus' prayer, Father, may they all be one, not little robots in a row, but with our hearts looking for one purpose in God, in Jesus Christ, the church will flourish. Arguing over each other, with each other over minor details is tearing us apart. Not what Jesus prayed for. And so David, Raymond, and Thomas, <clears throat> at the end of these reflections, I remind you of what Jesus asked Peter. And I would imagine today he's saying to you, David, Raymond, Thomas, do you love me more than the rest? Do you love me? Tend my lambs, feed my sheep. Dear sons, before you proceed to the order of the priesthood, you are to declare before the people your resolve to undertake this office. Do you resolve to discharge unfailingly with the guidance of the Holy Spirit the office of priesthood in the presbyteral rank as trustworthy co-workers with the order of bishops in feeding the Lord's flock? I do. do you resolve to carry out the ministry of the word worthily and wisely in the preaching of the gospel and the teaching of the Catholic faith? I do. do you resolve to celebrate the mysteries of Christ reverently and faithfully according to the tradition of the church, especially in the sacrifice of the Eucharist and the sacrament of reconciliation for the praise of God and the sanctification of the Christian people? I do. do you resolve to implore with us the mercy of God for the people entrusted to you with zeal for the commandment to pray without ceasing. Do you resolve to be united more closely each day to Christ the High Priest, who offered himself for us to the Father as a pure sacrifice, and with him to consecrate yourself to God for the salvation of all? Raymond, do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May, the, may God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Thomas, do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors. I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. David, do you promise respect and obedience to the diocesan bishop and to your legitimate superior. I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Thank you. 
Let us pray, dearly beloved, to God, the Almighty Father, that he will pour forth heavenly gifts in abundance on these his servants, whom he has chosen for the office of the priesthood. Let us Mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Holy Mary, Mother of God. St. 
Francis of Assisi. Saint Gertrude. Saint Raymond of Penafort. Saint Oscar Romero. Saint Rita of Kasha. All holy men and women, saints of God. Lord, be merciful. From all evil, Lord, deliver us, we pray. From every sin, from everlasting death, by your incarnation, by your death and resurrection, by the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, be merciful to us sinners. Protect your holy church. Keep the Pope and all the ordained and faithful service to your church. Bless these chosen men. Bless and sanctify these chosen men. Sanctify and consecrate these chosen men. Bring all peoples together in peace and true harmony. Comfort with your mercy the troubled and the afflicted. Strengthen all of us and keep us in your holy service. Jesus, Son of the living God, Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Pour out on these servants the blessing of the Holy Spirit and the power of priestly grace that you may surround with your rich and unfailing gifts those whom we present to your fatherly care for consecration. Through Christ our Lord.
Almighty and eternal God, author of human dignity and bestower of all graces, through whom all things progress, through whom all thing is made firm, who by the power of the Holy Spirit, in order to form a priestly people, established among them ministers of Christ, your Son, in various orders. Already in the early covenant, those there arose offices instituted by mystical rites, so that when you had set Moses and Aaron over your people to govern and sanctify them, you chose men next in order and dignity to join them and assist them in your work, their work. Thus in the desert, you instilled the spirit of Moses in the minds of 70, 70 wise men, with them as their helpers, who more, with them as their helpers, he more easily governed your people. And so too, over the sons of Aaron, you poured an abundant share of their father's fullness, that the number of priests prescribed by the law might be sufficient for the sacrifices of the tabernacle which were a shadow of the good things to come. But in these last days, Holy Father, you sent your Son into the world, Jesus, the Apostle and High Priest of our confession. Through the Holy Spirit, he offered himself unblemished to you and made his apostles who were consecrated in truth sharers in his mission. To them, you added companions to proclaim and carry out the work of salvation through the whole world. Now we pray, O Lord, provide also for our weaknesses those helpers whom we need for the exercise of the apostolic priesthood. Grant, we pray, Almighty Father, that these, your servants, the dignity of the priesthood, renew deep within them the spirit of holiness. May they hold the office second in order, received from you, O God, and by the example of their manner of life, may they inspire right conduct. May they be trustworthy co-workers with the order so that their, pre their preaching and through the grace of the Holy Spirit, the words of the gospel may bear fruit in human hearts and reach even to the ends of the earth. Together with us, may they be faithful stewards of your mysteries so that your people may be renewed through the cleansing waters of rebirth and refreshed from the altar, so that sinners may be re reconciled and the sick raised up. May they be joined to us, Lord, in imploring your mercy for the people entrusted to them and for the whole world. Thus, may the full number of the nations gathered together in Christ become your one people, brought to perfection in your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen.
May the Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit in power, guard you and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God. May the Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guard and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God. May the Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guard and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God.
receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you will do, imitate what you will celebrate, and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you will do, imitate what you will celebrate, and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you will do, imitate what you will celebrate, and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. be with you. Thank you, Thomas. Peace be with you.
with joy, Lord God, we place on your altar this chalice and paten for the celebration of the sacrifice of the new covenant. May the body and blood of your Son, offered and received by means of these vessels, make for us holy, make them holy. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that celebrating the unblemished sacrifice, we may be renewed by the sacraments on earth and endowed with your Spirit until all the saints, with all the saints, we come to delight in your banquet in the kingdom of heaven. Glory and honor to you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord, the, pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good to the law of his holy church. O God, who have willed that your priest should minister at the holy altar and serve your people, grant that by the power of this sacrifice we pray that the labors of your servants may constantly please you and in your church bear that fruit which lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. <clears throat> it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant, and by your wondrous design were pleased to decree that his one priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred mystery through the laying on of hands, through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption, to set before your children the paschal banquet, to lead your, peop your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness, witness of faith, faith and love. And so with the angels and saints, and we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, 
that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guide, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all those holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the, hope of re for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which you make, of, uh, make, which you make to us also for your servants, whom you have been pleased to raise to the order of priesthood. And by your mercy, keep safe your gifts to them so that what they have received by divine commission, they may fulfill by divine assistance. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray to bless, acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took his precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion and res the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, 
the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble service, we pray, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your son may be filled with every grace and bless, heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, those sinners, Hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good, these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God, the Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. body of Christ, the body of Christ, the body of Christ, blood of Christ. Blood of Christ. Blood of Christ. Thank you. 
Let us pray. May the divine sacrifice we have offered and received, O Lord, give new life to your priests and to all your servants, that united to you in unfailing love, they may receive the grace of giving worthy service to your majesty, through Christ our Lord. I was ordained uh, 48 years ago by St. Paul VI with 350 others. It took him three hours. It took me two and a half to do three. <laughs> he had 40 cardinals helping him. I do want to say a, a huge thank you to so many people, but um, especially to the families, uh, to Raymond's parents, Mark and Teresita, and his brothers and sisters and in-laws, his grandmother, and so many of the else that are here. Uh, thank you for the work that you've done um, creating a good home that Raymond has been brought up in. So thank you. To Thomas, his mother, uh, Deanne, and father, Thomas. And of course, I cannot forget his sister, Suzanne. She would never let me live it down. I've known Thomas. I've known Thomas since he was in first grade. Uh, he was a parishioner in College Station when I was there. Are there any other parishioners from College Station here? It's been a long time. I think I left my heart in College Station, but anyway. And to David uh, Snow and his, uh, his mother, and uh, Mary and dad, Jerry, and his brothers and the other family members and friends that are here as well with all the SALT community, we are very grateful for the witness that you've given, all of you have given, to bring these fine young men to this moment of, of their priestly ordination. I also want to uh, not forget, it's not written here, and I do not want to forget to thank, with a huge thank you, to Mr. Bob Cummings and to uh, Margie Rivera and the Office of uh, Vocations, as, long, as well as Dorothy Garza and the others that have worked in the Sarah Club with him over these past years, and also the other priests who have been a part of their formation in previous years. So thanks to all of you for your hard work and your prayers in keeping up with these young men and forming them in a beautiful way. I also want to thank the seminaries that are involved. We have three of them. 
And I'll begin with uh, Father Stephen Burr, the rector of Sacred Heart Seminary in Detroit. Thank you for being here. Also to Father Anthony Legato from the seminary in Rome, from the Pontifical North American College. I know he was here earlier. There you are. Thank you for being here as well and representing them. And uh, from St. Mary's Seminary, where uh, Thomas went, I see Monsignor Borski here. I don't think you're officially the representative, but anyway. Uh, we worked together at St. Mary's for six years. I was the spiritual director, and he was the rector for many more years than that. But you've always been a great witness of priesthood and formation, so thank you very, very much. Uh, also, Father James Swift, who's a spiritual director at St. Mary's in Houston as well. I saw you somewhere. There you are. Thank you for being here. And uh, Father Thomas from the Diocese of Tyler, a spiritual director at St. Mary's as well. There you are. Thank you, Father. Um, and I think Mrs. Kathy Kramer is here somewhere. Uh, she helps with the pastoral formation, the pastoral year. So thank you. If you're here, thank you very, very much for all that you've done. Uh, did I get everybody? I think so. Uh, and Father Vincent, uh, Anyama from the seminary in Dallas, Holy Trinity Seminary. He's the new rector there, and I know you're doing wonderful work. Thank you, and both uh, uh, Raymond and Thomas both went to, Saint, uh, to Holy Trinity. So thank you for your presence as well. Uh, I think that's it. So I also want to just recognize the preparation for today. I want to thank Father Pete Elizardo, who serves so beautifully with my um, MC. in preparing for today. And I also want to thank all the pastors of the Diocese of Corpus Christi and all the priests of the Salt community. You're all an inspiration to these men in your, your ministry. And thank you for all that you do for the people of God here in the Diocese of Corpus Christi and beyond. So thank you very, very much. Also, during their formation, each has spent time in a parish. We call it a pastoral year. And I see some lay people I know that were working on their teams. Uh, that's the year that the laity get to boss them around and kind of push them and say, do this, and get to be moms and dads and brothers and sisters to them. So thank you for your witness and your work in helping to form these young men in such a beautiful way. I also want to thank all of our servers and readers, um, those who have prepared the church, the Knights of Columbus who have accompanied us in our own um, hospitality team here from the cathedral um, to Alex in the choir, Alex Oldroy, and all the musicians and uh, the brass and the timpanis and everybody else who's here to make the music, music so beautiful today as well. Thank you to each one of you. That's what I have from my memory. If I forgot anyone, please forgive me. I'm beyond 70 now, so I have the right to forget. And now the moment that at least two of the men have been waiting for, uh, where they're going, their assignments. So I will ask Father Thomas to please come up first. Um, Father Thomas, I know you've been very patient. You have tried to break the seal, but it's not been broken. <laughs> And I want to thank the personnel committee for keeping their mouth closed. But you will be the associate, the uh, parochial vicar at St. Philip's Church here in Corpus Christi. <laughs> Father Andrew, I don't know where you're going. <laughs> I think you do, I don't, but anyway, you don't know either. Okay. Well, thank you. God bless you. So there's your certificate. These are certificates. To you. And I want to uh, say thank you to Father Raymond. He is going to make a sacrifice. Uh, he'll be at, here at the cathedral for the summer, uh, helping um, here at the cathedral as parochial vicar for a while. But he's also agreed to be sacrificial and go back to the sem not go back to the seminary, go back for studies to continue another two years for canon law. 
As you know, the church needs canon lawyers so badly, and um, he's done one year already, and he's agreed for more. But he, I told him he'd come home for Christmas anytime. Uh, if he gets homesick, just call, call and come. But thank you for your sacrifice. I really do appreciate that. Thank you. We'll put you in another place next time. <laughs> So now I would like to ask the first priestly blessing of the three priests that are here. Uh, that's the bishop's privilege, and then they will be able to, downstairs to offer blessings, first of all up here with their parents, and then downstairs with the rest of you who want their priestly blessing. Um, so I may make the three hours before we're done, but anyway. It's a special privilege to me and to you. I'll ask the three of you to offer the blessing with me this morning. The Lord be with you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. by your life.
priests in the Diocese of Corpus Christi. We thank everyone for watching and And now they receive the applause as they exit cathedral. Oh, isn't that beautiful? It it's is. just a, our cathedral fully packed of support and love for the, our newly ordained. And um, I oh. know many awaiting and what a beautiful ceremony. I say ceremony, but mass it was and celebration and reflection all throughout these last, uh, since 10 o'clock this morning. Yes, it's been uh, a tremendous experience to watch this uh, unfold here uh, on our screens, whether you're watching it as a live stream or you'll be watching it on the YouTube channel and uh, you watch the recording of it later on. Of course, Father Raymond Pendleton, Father Thomas Swert, and Father David Snow now exiting Corpus Christi Cathedral, uh, followed there by the Knights of Columbus and a tremendous group of supporting family, friends, and uh, onlookers that have joined today as we wish them well and we yes. keep them in our prayers and we thank of course Bishop Michael Mulvey for uh, his uh, leadership and ordaining these young men today as uh, they are sent out into the diocese. Yes, see that? And yes they are going all outside uh, to take hopefully a group photo that as a keepsake that they yes. can have for their family. Absolutely. I'm sure parents are, if there are any parent, they have a frame already. <laughs> <laughs> They've got it set, right, got they know where it's gonna go. On the, on the shelf already. <laughs> yes. And they'll be yeah. offering first blessings uh, at a reception after yes. uh, Mass in St. Joseph Hall, so we thank them for that. I also wanna reveal uh, the information about the first Masses that these yes. new priests will be doing. Father Raymond Pendleton will be at St. Elizabeth of Hungary, 1 p.m. Uh, tomorrow on Sunday. Yes, and Father Thomas, and then again, how we were enjoying his, how to say his last name, Schwartz. Schwartz, yes. Schwartz. Uh, he uh, actually went to Tamu, Keensville, and is, uh, has been there for some time back and forth, and will uh, celebrate his first Mass tomorrow at St. Gertrude in Keensville at 11 a.m. And then Father David Snow, Salt, uh, will be at St. Anthony in Robstown for the noon mass tomorrow on Sunday. We ask those of you who are listening, maybe know a young person in your life that uh, maybe uh, will begin to hear the God's call uh, mm -hmm. as uh, maybe on the next track to being a priest of uh, vocations. You can always find more information on our website at dioceccc.org. Bob Cummings, the director of vocations, very, very helpful resource to find out more. Yes, yes. We can, uh, the other thing I want to iterate is that uh, uh, Father Snow does not know his assignment just no, yet, but that. Salt is a different entity, if you will, that he will uh, more than likely could go anywhere across the world, actually. That's true. That's and true. Uh, so he's still yet to determine what's going to happen to him next. But uh, Father Thomas will will begin to join St. Philip the Apostle, which mm -hmm. um, I've attended that church many yes, times, did yes, many acts nice retreats and have some acts brothers and sisters from there. So I know that they are going to welcome him in with open arms and probably have a list of items that they are happy to work yes, on and yes, get back to. Absolutely. And then uh, Father Raymond uh, will be here at the cathedral during the summer, but going back for further for the education. Study in mm -hmm. canon law is what he'll mm -hmm. be studying a couple more years to go, but he'll still be available to help us out, which I'm sure uh, we all appreciate and will appreciate, but we wish him well and we thank him for his commitment and his service already. Yes. Also, speaking of commitment and service, we want to say, uh, remind you that Liz Morales, our, uh, our social media uh, uh, person, will be available later on this afternoon on Facebook as she will interview our newly ordained priests. Yes. And that will be streaming on or available on Facebook a little bit later on this afternoon. Exactly. They'll go downstairs to St. Joseph Hall, as uh, Bishop Mulvey said, where there's been a lot of fellowship uh, taking place downstairs to mm -hmm. prepare for mm -hmm. the entry of our new priest and their family and friends and so forth. And so we thank you so much for just being a part of this and being a witness as well. Absolutely. We thank you for your participation. Uh, you can share this uh, stream as uh, you see there on your screen with the scan with the uh, QR code and the various platforms where you can find a recording of today's ordination. There's quite a bit there, Jesse. So it. which one? Is it Facebook, Instagram, it's all YouTube? Of them. <laughs> okay. Anything you can think of. Whatever you feel like having, it's Diocese all there. of Corpus and Christi. We appreciate you and of course a lot of information as yes. we said about vocations and our other yes. ministries on our website at diocc or we invite you to check that out. Yes. All right. Well it has been a great joy has been to a be here. 
uh, to prepare for this on our side of it oh, yes. and uh, to see it, so fast. it did. <laughs> and there was a few tears shed, I'll just say yes. that. And uh, we did have some uh, a bit of fun too to just be so proud. I, I feel like we, we know them, don't yes. we? Yes, and we, we look forward to the many years of service that they will offer our diocese and beyond. And we thank the families of the newly ordained as well, the new priests in our diocese. Yes. Right. Thank you so much, and God bless you all. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for watching. May God bless you. This has been a broadcast of the 2023 Priestly Ordination, live from the Corpus Christi Cathedral. Thank you for watching and for your support. For more information on the different ministries in the Diocese of Corpus Christi, please scan the QR code on your screen or log on to diocesecc.org. Thank you, and God bless you and yours. Hi everyone, I'm Katia Uriarte, the Director of Communications and Public Relations for the Diocese of Corpus Christi. And our vocation here in our office is to help spread the good news of the Lord in today's modern world. And how do we do that? Let us show you how. In addition to the various writing projects, we also record Our Shepherd's View with Bishop Michael Mulvey. That is his weekly reflection on the gospel, his way of staying connected to the faithful. And we record that podcast right here in this studio. From managing our diocesan website to creating parish promotional materials and creating the new Catholic Connect e-newsletter, our goal is to bring parishioners from across the diocese together and connect as one body of Christ. With our magazine, South Texas Catholic, we want to inform you what's going on at the diocese, connect all the vibrant parishes, and share examples how to live out our faith in today's world. We try to stay in touch on social media platforms like Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. So you know everything that's happening, from vocations to Catholic schools and memorable occasions happening in our world. Make sure to follow us. You're more than a friend, you're family. Our other job in the communications department is to bring our Sunday services to those who are unable to attend in person. We offer both English and Spanish, and those can be found on the web and on live broadcast television. Make sure to follow us on all of our social media channels, and if you would like to subscribe to South Texas Catholic and or Catholic Connect, make sure you scan the QR code that you see on your screen. I joined YCA because when I first got down here to Corpus, I didn't really have any other community to get involved with. I had friends at St. Elena's that I went to church with, and they told me about uh, the Young Catholic Adult Group, and I haven't really looked back since then. It's helped me grow a lot in my faith since being down here. I kind of realized I never had a group to like focus on, like, on my values. So I joined ICA because I wanted to be able to defend my faith. And I also wanted to build a community around a place that I already knew for many years, but I had never really explored. I like to say I came for, for a community, but I, I, I got a lot more than that. Leap in, and I promise you that regardless of where you're at, you're going to find the best people, and you'll be able to further your faith in that process. Don't wait to join. If you have been thinking about joining YCA, there's a whole bunch of different events that you can participate in. Hi, my name is Siobhan O'Connor, and I'm the Director of Young Adult Ministry for the Diocese of Corpus Christi. My office works with groups like YCA, Young Catholic Adults, to bring young adults ages 18 to 39 into a deeper friendship with Jesus Christ and His Church and encourage them to become His missionary disciples. Whether you are single or married, in college or a young professional, I invite you to join one of our many events each month for faith, fun, and fellowship. Scan the QR code here to learn more. I think the choice for Catholic education is an important choice because Catholic schools change lives. In Catholic schools, our students have a beautiful opportunity to grow, to learn, and to succeed in a secure learning environment where teachers really care, are dedicated, and inspiring and challenge our students. It's so wonderful to teach students in today's world because it gives them the opportunity to discuss the deep things that matter in life, their faith, their spirituality, and how to be a Catholic in the modern world. It's awesome to see them grow in that way and to, to really engage in that 
uh, in, the, in the full depth of humanity. They've been so respectful about my faith, and they've made me feel comfortable, and if anything, I've grown closer to other people because of it. It feels very relaxing that I can talk about my faith. So our students have a wonderful opportunity to grow in their faith life, to study ethics, to study morality, and to really grow in their relationship with Jesus Christ. Catholic schools are an experience and a training ground for a lifetime. This is a wonderful faith-based learning environment, and I encourage all of you to visit the website of the Office of Catholic Schools to get information on all of the wonderful schools in the diocese.